only you. Rip and tear until it is done. The new Doom Eternal has just launched, and you're wondering, what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You grab a good old PC off a good old game tree for 175 Aussie dollars, and you get yourself a GTX 970 for 120 Aussie dollars, and you grab yourself an SSD, and you got yourself a whole build for under 300 Aussie dollars. That is an absolute bargain, but of course, we had to cut out, or should I say in this case, tech yes, loving with a hammer, that hard drive cage out of there, and then we were able to fit that hard drive up the top with some double-sided tape, and then put the SSD just below it, and we could fit that long GTX 970 in there. Now, the recommended specs, they state that you need a GTX 970 or better, which in this case is absolutely perfect. Though, for the recommended CPU, they're saying i7 6700K. So we've got an i7-4770 here, and I'm hoping we'll get some really good FPS. But before we do check this game out and see how good it is on this budget PC right here, we have to give it a little bit of tech, yes, loving, and that is where we clean it up and we make it look brand new. So who's ready? I'll tell you who's ready. Veritons ready. I was Now, whenever we come into a used OEM system here at Tech yes City, we have to implore safe hygienic practices, and that means changing over the thermal paste on this CPU right here. And the final touches include some bang job cable management and some tech yes loving with multi-purpose spray and we've got ourselves a gaming PC! So we're now installing Doom Eternal and while we wait for that to complete, there is a couple of touch-ups that we can do to this build still. The first thing we can do is add an exhaust fan in and then the second thing, well actually second and third thing, is we're going to open a program called Inspector. Since this is an older i7, we then disable those Meltdown Inspector updates and that makes our CPU perform just that much better in games. And then right beside that we've got MSI Afterburner where we're going to quickly overclock this GPU right here, which in this case, this thing does respond really well to overclocking.
And I just started playing Doom Eternal and here we are at night time and I lost track of time. So this game was really exciting. I played the first level all the way through and even on the medium difficulty setting, I came into some parts that were pretty difficult. So I think they've got the difficulty just right with this game as opposed to games I've played in the past, which were just a walk in the park. This one actually requires a bit of skill to get through. Now, there was a few little things that I came into. I couldn't play anyone on the multiplayer yet because I'm guessing it's like only other people who have got pre-access and no one was on trying to join a server at the time I was on. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have played some multiplayer, but apparently they've got uh, two demons versus one slayer and the multiplayer is unique in that aspect. So I'm looking forward to trying that out and seeing how it differs from the single player campaign, which has got its own pretty cool story, which is set on Earth this time around. So the Doom storyline continues. But that being said, we've got the FPS figures here, which is on the Vulcan API by default. And with our GTX 970, we were getting some really smooth frame rates. Uh, we had low settings here, 108 FPS, and then the 1% 1 and 1% lows was 76 and 75. Dropping it down to medium settings then saw us get 97 average FPS. This is a 1080p, by the way. And then the 1% 1 and 0.1% 1 lows were fine, just like they were on high, which I thought looked the best, as well as giving us out the best performance per graphic settings, where we actually couldn't set it on Ultra or Nightmare after that, because the uh, VRAM limit of 4 gigabytes on this card was it was trying to demand more than that. So if you want to try and get it on Nightmare, you're going to need a six gigabyte card like a GTX 1060 at this resolution or an RX 588 gigabyte to be able to enjoy this at 1080p Ultra or Nightmare. And now the funny thing about this game was we had the CPU utilization just hovering around most of the time 30 to 40% and the temperatures on the CPU were absolutely fine even with this budget cooler on this budget motherboard. So this wasn't a problem even with the RAM not overclocked on this board, which we unfortunately can't do. We still had really smooth frame rates and the GPU was being utilized pretty much 100% at all times. So ID, that's the guys who make Doom. They do a fantastic job of optimizing this title for PC. As we can see here with this budget PC, we're getting smooth frame rates and it looks absolutely gorgeous. The gameplay is really good. But another thing I'll add on top of that, this game is really GPU demanding. So we saw those CPU utilization figures on a uh, 4770, which is now quite a few years old, and it's only four cores, eight threads. We still uh, were maxing out this GTX 970 when it was overclocked. So even with this CPU, I'm guessing you could get something like a 5700 XT, and it would be a perfect combo for maxing out the 4770 and the 5700 XT, of course, in this title. In other titles, if you played on PC, the 5700 XT would probably want a better CPU than the 4770. But of course, since it's Doom and it's well optimized, it's gonna give you a really good experience, even if you're on a potato. Just make sure you've probably got something better than a potato for your graphics card, however. And with all that out of the way, this right here, I've got it in the background right there, you can see it on the chair, the Acer Veriton M6. I picked this up for an absolute bargain where I got a one terabyte hard drive included, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 4770, and that was 175 Aussie dollars. And it included a 500 watt gold rated power supply, which even overclocked the GTX 970. Now I did a previous video where the GTX 970 is one of my favorite picks on the used market for graphics cards at the moment. And these two combinations together just gave us some ridiculously good price performance and we didn't come into really any hassles while we're putting this build together besides getting out our own hammer which i did get a bit of inspiration from this video game and i thought it was the boss fight when i was trying to get that hard drive cage out but besides that the pc was relatively hassle free to get going overclocking was easy if you're using the tech yes two minute method and then the game itself presented no problems. It didn't crash at all and it's ready to go even on some old school specs like we had in today's video. So this game is good to go if you're thinking about playing it on PC. And also I wanna give a big thanks to Bethesda for including me in the uh, pre-release review phase and uh, allowing me to give you guys an awesome video for today so if you enjoyed this one then be sure to hit that like button for us and also let us know in the comment section below 
Are you going to be checking out Doom? And do you like what you've seen so far? Love for any of your thoughts and opinions as always. And speaking of thoughts and opinions, we've got the question of the day, which comes from Zeb Top Gumming. Uh, they ask, why haven't you tested the Gamax 400? Is it a really good budget cooler? And the Gamax 400, that's a CPU cooler. I have tried it in the past. The problem is it's not really available anywhere locally, at least for a decent price. And since I've checked out the Snowman, which is on AliExpress, that thing is coming in with some of the best price performance if you need a budget CPU cooler to either keep your CPU temps cooler than they'd be on a stock cooler, or if you wanna do a bit of overclocking. But if you guys wanna see that cooler versus the Snowman, then I can round up some more budget CPU coolers and test them here on the channel. Hope that answers that question, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, then you know what to do, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now.